everyone on journal page today and we are going to do some grungy uh, background uh, for the art journal page and I've done this one and I was asked I've how I've done this so easy we are going to do something similar only uh, today I'm going for a blue color this was done from just a uh, cutting squares out of the IKEA catalog and mostly it's if you will look at the IKEA catalog mostly it's gray it has lots of a um, little uh, I don't know what to call it a uh, puddles of uh, other colors but mostly it's gray so that's what I've used for this uh, background and today I've taken some pages out of uh, Net National Geographic most of them are uh, just blue, some article about penguins, and so I just took everything uh, that I found with all kinds of blue color. So that's my pages, and I'm going to flip over here, and we are going to do a double spread. So, first of all, you... You need to decide how you want your background if you want to I uh, the the one I showed you I've cut squares it doesn't have to be you can do circles you can just tear the the pages however you want now I I'm going to cut this also into I think some kind of rectangles not squares and just three cutting and I have <laughs> I don't know how you're calling it in English here it's called the guillotine off with their heads so this is just a will be a little bit faster for me I hope because it's they are very thin okay so first I've got rid of the jagged edges and now I'm just going to cut all kinds of uh, rectangles don't really care and I'm going for quite large pieces so I won't spend the whole uh, time just gluing pieces to cover my page something like that let's see maybe cut another one here that's enough and now it's just gluing gluing without overthinking it just putting it down and because these are really thin pages I'm just going to use a glue stick nothing more but I am going to be generous about it and just start gluing down pieces and I don't care what shows and what's not most of them are going to overlap so it really doesn't matter you can start at one side and continue to the other or start from the middle and spread out whatever works for you and again it can be small pieces large pieces <laughs> whatever you feel comfortable with i'm just spreading them around so i will have <clears throat> all kinds of colors to play with like so and if i don't like the white that is showing here then i'm just going to put a piece that will cover it like so and let's take this one as I said no overthinking just putting it down most of it is gonna get covered Seems like my kids don't know how to close the door without slamming it. 
So that's what you are hearing in the background. How lovely. Okay, let's see. Maybe I should have a cut smaller pieces, but I don't care. Moving on. So now I have a lots and lots of gluing. And I think that I'll just come back when I finished covering the whole page. Now I'm also sticking pieces that are going off the edges and when I'm done I'll just trim the excess. Nothing to it. And covering the white strip that I don't like. And moving on like this yeah let's go so I'm going to just continue gluing pieces and I'll be back when I'm finishing when I'm finished covering the page okay so finished gluing now we are going to grunge it up and basically we are putting down uh, elements that will tie everything together. I have some acrylic paint here. I've got some really dark blue, some purp uh, gray, some black and a lighter gray. And I'm just starting by smearing paint over the edges or in places that I think it's needed. It's quite intuitive. There are no rules to it. I'm darkening. I just want to darken the edges, and it doesn't have to be with your finger. You can also use a sponge. You can use a paintbrush. Whatever works for you. And I know you can hardly see it, but because I've got lots of uh, dark colors on my page, but at the end you will see how everything works together so as you can see I'm just using my finger to smear this and nothing else now the the paper that I've glued are a little bit glossy so it takes a, a little bit for them to catch the paint And now I'm just going in in several places and smearing the paint. Just to grunge it up, you can also use a palette knife if you like that to scrape some uh, paint all over. And let's see, let's put a little bit here. No uh, rules to it. So I'm taking this uh, gray that looks just a little bit uh, with the blue tint in it. And again, smearing randomly in all places that I think it's needed like so basically I think I'm going for the edges of the pieces just to blend them together and make it a little bit less harsh but I'm not aiming to conceal that they are a that they have straight edges it's just more of unifying the look of the page and sometimes just adding more color where you want it Something like that. So now I'm waiting for this to dry because I want to stencil on top of it. So I'll be back. 
I'm back. So uh, the other page I've showed you, I've done a stenciling in the back with uh, lots of numbers in all different sizes. For this one, I'm uh, taking this stencil. It really doesn't matter whatever you have, use it. It can be anything. If it's numbers, if it's letters, if it's arrows or a, I don't know, any kind of stencil with details that you want to uh, use. And it really doesn't matter what it says or what are the numbers. It's just an element in the back that is going to add to the, to grungy up the background. That's the best explanation I can give. Now I'm just uh, putting it down and starting dabbing. I've got black pa acrylic paint here and makeup sponge and I'm just stenciling some of the words and it's going to be quite random. The only thing is that I always try to go until I hardly have anything on my sponge and then the effect is that it's fading away and is it's not harsh on the page but uh, it's everyone has its uh, preferences and you can do as bold as you want or as blended as you like so I'm just going as I said randomly stenciling on my page and I'm starting with a loaded sponge and finishing the outer edges with hardly anything and I can always check and see if it's a uh, good or if I want to add something keeping with the randomness just stenciling more I've picked this one because it uh, again it gives me all kinds of sizes and shapes and I don't need to change stencils in between that's the only a uh, reason I've picked this the same thing I've done the numbers on the other page it's because I had lots and lots of uh, different numbers in different sizes so I didn't have to <laughs> work so hard which sometimes that's what <laughs> makes your decision stencils that have all kinds of options on one stencil instead of just keep a uh, changing in some places I'm stenciling almost black on a very a uh, dark blue but I don't care I can see it and it still adds something to the whole so that's why I'm doing it so I'm going to uh, continue just stenciling this and I'll be back. Okay, so moving on. This, I finished the grunging up. Now I, I'm going for a, what I want to do on top of my page. I've got this stencil that I made and I've got here some gesso. And I'm going to start by a, doing a stenciling this and I'm using gesso instead of white uh, acrylic paint because it's a great primer and base and I'm not sure yet which kind of paint I'm going to put on top so it will give me a nice base to work on especially that I have a really dark background So right now I've done this, I don't know what to call it, branch, a little bit, uh, let's say, off ground, but I'm planning on putting something there so it won't look floating. But right now I'm just stenciling, dabbing my uh, makeup sponge 
to get rid of excess uh, vessel or paint or whatever and I still got <laughs> a little bit running away but never mind so doing uh, this one now and maybe overlapping I don't know I'm trying not to have too much gesso on my sponge and if I want it to look more white then I will just have to be patient and do another layer on top I'm thinking of doing a, another branch here on this side of my page and I'm planning on some birds here so I'm going over the areas that I think need to be more white of course uh, it's better if I will wait for it to dry completely <laughs> but never mind so another one yeah we'll see but i will wait for it to dry a little bit because i think i'm gonna flip it over so i won't have the same uh, movement <laughs> uh, yeah i think i'll go like this and maybe more branches i'm not sure and i want some uh, birds here the, it's going to be another stencil i've made you can hardly see it it's because it's clear and i'm not sure yet which birds to do but i'm going to continue stenciling and i'll be back okay so i had to go over a, each item a, a second time with gesso to make it more white and in some places I even uh, done some correction with some white Posca pen and I still wanted uh, it to be more defined so I took a permanent blue marker and I'm just going around each uh, part of the stencil like this just to make it more defined on my page still haven't gotten to <laughs> add some paint although I'm quite liking this white on on top of this dark background we'll see I'm just going over this bird around and we'll see this is a very cheap permanent marker it's supposed to be for CDs and DVDs you can find it in office supplies and I just like using it no particular brand just whatever you can find here we go okay <laughs> so now about a uh, some color and when I thought about it I really wanted something bold like red at least for the birds let's try it I don't know I'm going to use some water soluble oil pastels just because I can play with them you can use whatever you want that you can put on white gesso I'm just going to start and see how it goes if I don't like it there is always more <laughs> white gesso to <laughs> apply so we'll see okay so I've got a little bit of it here let's try and find some brush and I'm taking very little water here and activating okay now the purpose of using this is that I thought that I can well smear it of course but then go and 
let it fade a little bit and even remove a little bit with my finger or more water I can take more water and I don't know yeah I'm taking now another shade it's more a uh, orange just to as I said I wanted a bold color where did I put the red here it is I'm thinking a little bit red a little bit orange I don't think I'm gonna cover everything not sure yet and it's, as I said if I don't like it there is always more gesso so I'm just cleaning a, a little bit on this rag just so I can blend it more and I'm thinking that I need to remove part of this and add from the orange to make it a little bit brighter yeah Okay, just a little bit more here. Okay, I can live with it. Not, not exactly as I've planned, but I can live with it. So I'm again putting a little bit of red, a little bit of orange and going to do the same thing. And I'm thinking of applying some some green to uh, the branches here, leaves, whatever. Okay, so a little bit of water probably can be done also with a Q-tip if it's easier for for you to work with on small areas like this. Taking a little bit off here. It's nice that I can play with it and remove when something is just too much. And blend. That's what's great with all water uh, reactive uh, things. So you can use if if it's a uh, pencils, watercolor pencils, or anything that or like gelatos also reacts with water. So let's see branches. Uh, what color do I want? Well, I don't know. Let's try this one, light blue. I need them to stay um, prominent on my page and not uh, disappear. So we'll try this. I have too much water <laughs> on my brush. And some of the colors just don't react the same. Don't like it. Let's try this one. Something is just not working. Maybe if I will take the color directly. Still don't like it. 
Okay, so I'm going to remove this with water. And I'm going for something else. Let's see how some highlight markers will work on it because I want them to pop off my page. So I've got these two and let's test it. Okay, let's see if I can mix them so I won't have a single color pair leaf and it seems like they go together nicely. Okay, and we have a winner. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to color everything with the highlighters and now I'm thinking of removing this and using the highlighters here also. We'll see. I'm just going to continue with this and I'll be back. Okay, so finished with the birds. I stenciled the word fly and done the same thing I've done uh, here. Just so some uh, of the permanent marker around and I use the highlighters here and I feel like I need some yellow splatter over the page don't know why so I took some yellow acrylic paint and a little bit of water and a fan brush and I'm going to start splattering now I want it almost uh, around what I've got I don't care if it will go over but I'm trying to keep it around the birds and uh, these branches just adding a little bit water where I think it's needed and just wiping the dot that went on my bird Maybe a little bit here in between yeah I think this is it but I, <laughs> I keep splattering <laughs> this is it keeps splattering let's see Yeah, that's it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm done. I like it. I'm done before I'm doing something that I will regret. So this is it. That's the grungy uh, background with a little bit of highlighters there. So it will pop on this darker background. Hope you liked it. Hope you'll do something uh, similar. Have fun and thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for leaving me comments down below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.